I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I'm so thankful that, that you're here today and that we get to worship God together. I'm so thankful because this is what we were created to do, is to come together to worship Him and to bless His name at all times. If you have your Bibles, open with me to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 12, and we'll begin there. We're going to have a baby dedication right after the service is over and uh, at, right at the end of the service. And so uh, please, at the end, we'll just, just remain where you are and uh, we'll, we'll continue from there. But we are so thankful this morning that God is doing great things in your life and in this church today. Amen. Our God is a faithful God. Our God is a God that is on time. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know where you're at. But I can tell you this. God knows exactly where you are this morning. He knows exactly what you have need of. And He is going to meet every need according to His riches and glory. And so I pray that you would trust Him this morning. Because His Word is, re is true. And, and, and our God is more real than the building that we sit in today. I pray that you don't look at your, your faith as some kind of a figment of your imagination, that this is something that man has conjured up. And I also pray that you would, you would take seriously what your God is doing and that He is working on your behalf today. And we're going to see a little bit of that today. And I know that we've got a long way to go and a little time to get there, but praise God by the Holy Spirit, we'll get it done. Amen. Would you stand for the reading of God's Word? Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go forth from your country and from your relatives and from your father's house to the land which I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. And so you shall be, be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you and the one who curses you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So Abraham went forth as the Lord had spoken to him. And Lot with, went with him. Now Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his nephew, and all their possessions which they had accumulated, and the persons which they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan. Thus they came to the land of Canaan. Father, we thank you today. We thank you, God, for your word today. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for revealing it to us. We thank you that, God, that you did not leave us without instruction, without direction, without purpose, but you even sent the Holy Spirit to live within us, to lead us, and to direct our every step. I pray, Holy Spirit, that we would be open to what you speak into our lives today. I pray that, Father, that it would be transforming, life-changing, God, that as we sit in your presence, God, and your Holy Spirit fills this place, oh God, I pray that you would begin to work in our hearts and in our minds. And may we not just be hearers, but may we be doers of your word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. We had talked about Abraham and when he had begun to set out last week and how his father Terah went uh, he, he had left uh, from, from the one place and he'd come to Haran and so he had settled in this place of Haran they were on their way to Canaan and, and, and God I, I believe God intervened and this is the thing that we where we have to come to a place where we, we don't always understand what's going on but we know that God does and this is what faith is 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 not not having to know everything not having to have all the information not having to have it all but knowing that God does in trusting him and this is what faith is is being able to trust God no matter what happens and what's taking place in our lives I just want to put a little plug in here this, this morning as we get started. That, that, you know, our job is to help 
you and, and each and every person to find their calling and to begin to walk in that calling. Because it's not just so that we can come into the church and sit in a place and, and, and just, you know, eat the word of God and never do anything. But it's to call us, to equip us so that we can go out and we can begin to do the ministry that God has called us into. And so I pray that you and I would, would understand this and as, as God is beginning to call us out. But, but here we are, we, we have a water station that, is, that we're getting ready to, 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 to be a part of. And you may say, well, pastor, that's really not that much. No, this is, this is us as a collective body coming to do the work that God has called us to do. You see, we could, we, one of us may be able to get out there and try to do the job, but it takes all of us. And, and I don't know about you, but we have been in this 21 day fast. And so, you, you know, you might say, well, pastor, I don't know. Can I tell you this? God called his people into a fast collectively because I, it, it, there's something about coming into agreement corporately that God blesses. The Bible says that when unity was struck, it was like the oil that fell on Aaron's head and dripped down to his beard and all the way down his robe. And it is an, an anointing and it is unity. And the Bible says that at that point, God commanded the blessing when they came together corporately and God commands the blessing. And this is why we fast uh, as, a, as a body of Christ. You know, you may say, well, I, I like to fast solo. Well, it's necessary. John Wesley said that he, he demanded of his people to fast every Wednesday and every Friday until 4 p.m. And the reason for it is because there's something that happens when you do it collectively and you come into agreement. Now, let me tell you why. Because the Bible says if one can put a thousand to flight... Two can put 10,000 to flight. Just imagine what we all can do together collectively. We can run every devil out of Edinburgh. And even beyond, beyond the Edinburgh and beyond this city and beyond this valley. And so, so when any, when, when, whenever the devil tries to come in and say, well, this is, no, God called all his people to fast. And when he did it, even their animals fasted. And so, so, so don't, don't take lightly what God is doing. And I believe that there are some things that God has put in motion in these past 21 days. And, I, and I'm telling you, they are, they are already unfolding before our eyes. So here we go. See, you, you, Abraham comes out of the land and, and, God, and, and God begins to call him out because he's wanting to set him apart. When God begins to set you apart, he will call you out. Of where you are. You may be comfortable where you are. But God is calling you personally. See God has a calling for each person personally. He has a calling even for us as the body of Christ collectively. And so when he does that. He begins to call us out and set us apart. See there may be because where you're at right now. There may be too many distractions. And there may be too many opinions that are, that are trying to feed in to your own heart and your own mind. See, if God were to bring you into the place and you were listening to others, all of a sudden when troubles and everything else began to take place around you, then you would begin to wonder, was it because so-and-so said this, that's why I'm here? And you would begin to doubt your calling because you would begin to think that your calling was based upon someone else speaking to you. And this is why it's so important for you to get alone with God and get in the Word of God and spend time in His Word so that God can separate you and begin to speak to you on a personal level. It's good to come in and it's good to be prayed over and it's good to hear what God is saying for us. But I can tell you this, when God is speaking to you, because as I stand up here, I have to step aside and become and allow myself to become because God says that we are the oracles of God. We don't speak about God, but we stand here as the spokesman for God. And so don't take for granted when you're sitting there and you're hearing the Word of God as if it's coming merely from a man. 
You hear it, you get in the Word and see what God begins to do in your life. Until you begin to practice, you will never experience the blessings that God has for you. You see, because when trouble arises, all of a sudden doubts and fears and all of these things begin to come in. And they try to set you off. See, it may be your environment that is holding you back. It may be the place where you're, you're at right now. It may be that, that workplace that is draining you. It may be somewhere that you are. And we'll get into that. But, but here's the thing. God has to take you out of that place. He has to remove you. Because that place is draining you. And what it's doing, it's trying to stop you from dreaming. And when you begin to dream, I can tell you there's enough people around you that are going to try to tell you, no, you're dreaming too big. I can tell you if you're not dreaming big enough, then it's probably not God dreaming. And if, you're, and if you think that you, 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 know, you can accomplish it, then I can tell you then it's not God the one that's speaking it to you. I want to put this disclosure on it. Because the Bible says that there is, there is wisdom in counsel. In Proverbs 15 and 22 it says, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. And then let me say this, you better know who it is that is speaking into your life. You better know who it is that is speaking into your life. Because you better know that they are with you. You better know that they are for the plan of God in your life. And that they are not there to sabotage what God is doing in you. Because when God begins to bless you, then, then, then not everybody is going to be happy for you. And so that's why God begins to separate you and call you out of certain things. Because He's wanting to do a work in you. And when He does it, you're going to know that it's Him. See, God was talking to Abraham about things that were to come that Abraham had no idea of. And God has some things in store for you and for me that you and I don't know about. But Galatians 3 and 8 says this, that the Scriptures, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you. You see, Abraham may not have understood it at that very moment because the Bible says he didn't receive the promise, but yet he believed that God would perform it. Let me say to you this morning, are you willing to follow and to be obedient to God even though you may not see the promise come to pass? It may be for your children and your children's children and it may be for someone else, but are you willing to be obedient and sacrifice for their cause? But Abraham, it didn't deter him. He believed God. He continued in, in God. You can't allow the pressures that are around you to define who you are. You see, there's a lot of things that, that are putting pressure in your life that are trying to define who you are. Your past mistakes are trying to define who you are. You see, maybe you didn't accomplish something. Maybe you weren't ready yet. And, and you say, well, I, I'll never be. And, and see, Satan is really good about this. But not just Satan, because the Bible says the world, the flesh, and the devil are against you. And these things are trying to stop and hinder the Word of God in your life. And the pressures that are around you are trying to squeeze you into a mold. But the Bible says that we can't allow the things of this world to pressure us into a mold, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind in Christ Jesus. We have to get into the Word of God and hear what God has to say because God is the only one who has the right to define who you are. 
See, your past tries to define you. Others try to define you. They tried to do it with Jesus Christ Himself. When Jesus came unto His own, the Bible says He couldn't even minister in His own hometown. And why? Because they looked at Him and they said, Is not this Jesus, mother of son of Mary and Joseph? And they look at you and they say, I, I, I know who your parents are and I remember who you are and I remember how you used to get in trouble and I remember how you used to do this. Can I tell you this? All things have changed and all things have become new. Now God is the only one that gets to define who I am. And you say, well, why is that, Pastor? Because... He is the one who created me. He is the one who has given me purpose. So be careful who you allow to speak into your life because they are trying to squeeze you into a mold. And, 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 the, and the, the sad thing is, is that many times we, we begin to shrink back and allow the world to define who we are. See, God knows what we have need of. And as long as we're looking for it in something or someone else, we're never going to see it come to pass. And that's why He calls us out of where we are. Because there are too many voices trying to define you. Think about it this morning. What is stopping you? What's holding you back? What is it that you've been telling yourself or allowing the enemy to tell you? I can tell you it's, it's real. You say, well, pastor, it's, it's easy for you to say because you, pastor, I can tell you I, I, I face the same things. I face the same devils that you face. I face all the same things that you face, but God. But God, see, I know who to go to. See, at other times we try to change the terms of the contract. And let me say this, only God sets the terms. You see, we try to change the terms of the contract. We try to tell God, this is how it's going to be. We try to say, God, if you're going to bless me, then this is how you're going to bless me. And we begin to lay out these things saying, God, this is the only way that you can do what you want to do. But only God gets to set the terms of the contract. See, He doesn't ask you and I for our input, but it's not my will, Jesus said, but thy will be done. You see, a lot of times we want to sit at the table and we want to have a word in this. And we want to say, well, God, if, if you're going to do it, then you're going to do it this way. And this is what you're going to do. You say, God, if he's going to bless me, he'll bless me right where I am. And we get frustrated where we are because we are trying to do it in our own strength. We are trying to change the terms of the contract. We are trying to say, well, I know what your word says, but I've got a better way. Mm, getting quiet. You see, we say, I know a better way than what you've already purposed in your plans before eternity began. God, I know that you've written all my days in a book before any one of them came to pass, but I've got a better plan. And God says, you don't get a say in this. It is, it is obedience to the faith. God will give you a choice in it. But His plans are perfect. His word is established. He will not change His plans and His purposes for you. You get a choice. You can either obey or disobey. You can either choose His will or not choose His will. And determine, determining upon your decision, upon your free will, upon your choice, you will either walk in the will of God or you will not. Now see, God knows what you are facing today. But what He does is, is, is He has to say, he, instead God has to prepare you for the blessing. So God has to prepare you for the blessing. And part of the preparation is taking you out from where you are. So God will remove you from where you are. God is going to remove you from, the, from the, that situation. God has to take you out. It hurts. But God has to remove you from the influences. 
As long as Abraham is in Haran, there are too many influences around him. Away from the influence, away from the negativity, away from the naysayers. Why? Because, because I can tell you this, not everyone wants to see you succeed. Mm, praise God, at least we got one believer today. God doesn't, and not everybody wants to see you do well. Not everybody wants you to, to, to see you prosper. You see, the Bible says that God has plans for you. And, and you have to believe that. God has plans for you. I can tell you His ways are higher than ours. And, and His thoughts are, are greater than ours. His, His thoughts are not like man's. His ways are not like... We think way too low of a level when God's beginning to think up here. And God is saying, I, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the plans and the thoughts that I think towards you. Plans to prosper you. Plans for a future. Plans to do great things in your life. But when, when, when others begin to see you and see the favor of God upon you, they're not going to be happy. You say, what do you mean, pastor? Could you flesh that out just a little bit more? Yeah. You see, everybody knew that, that the favor was upon Joseph. Everybody knew in his family that Joseph had the favor of his father. And they were fine with the favor being upon Joseph. Joseph could come out. They didn't like it. They kind of snickered at him. Thinking, who do you think you are? But they didn't know the purpose that God had for his life. And everybody might be fine looking at you and seeing the blessings. But I can tell you this. When you do like Joseph. Now come on somebody. When you do like Joseph. And you begin to show and, pull, and put the favor on. When you do like Joseph and you begin to put that coat of many colors. And when you begin to wear the favor of God. Then it begins to disrupt everybody. Oh, then you see. You see, they're okay as long as your favor, you keep it to yourself. But I can tell you this, when God begins to, to, to lavish His favor upon you, there comes a point when you can't hide it any longer. There comes a time when God is saying, no more of this. I want you to wear it. I want you to put it on so that others can see what I'm doing in your life and they can glorify me. If they don't want to believe it, they don't have to believe it. But you, don't you dare try to hide what God is doing in your life. He says, let your light shine that others may see His good works and glorify Him. So don't try to hide it. So God pulls them out. You can't change the terms, but God has to prepare you for the blessing. And part of the preparation is taking you out and removing you from the things that are trying to stop you and stifle what God is doing in you. So you didn't understand why, the, why, why, the, why everything seemed to be changing. It may have even taken you by surprise. But let me tell you why all of this is happening. See, the blessing is not where you are. The blessing is not where you are right now. You see, you want to say, God bless me right here. God told the children of Israel, you're crossing, the, you're, you're crossing that Jordan River. Flood stage 12 miles wide in some, time, in some places that river would overflow its banks. And God says, you're not going to experience the blessing until you take a step of faith and you, you're ready to move out from where you are. You won't see one thing. You won't see my hand. You won't see the blessings that I'm about to give you until you are willing to put a foot in that river. I'm not going to stop it. There's not going to be even an inclination of what I'm going to do because this is a walk of faith. And some of you sit there and you're like, God, give me a sign. And God says, there will be no sign given until you begin to step out in faith and begin to believe what I'm going to do in your life. You see, we sit back and we say, oh, God, bless me right where I'm at. 
And God says, no, I can't bless you there because that's not where the blessing is. Abraham could have argued God and could have got down on his knees and pled with God and said, God, can't you just bless me right here in Haran? And God says, no, because the blessing is waiting, waiting in Canaan land. You say, well, 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 well pastor, today, you, you know what you're saying. You, you know where you're at. You know those people that are around you. I, I'm telling you, when I became a believer, I thought everyone w- was going to come with me and become a believer, the people that I hung out with. It was a rude awakening. They didn't much like me anymore. And I could tell you this, I could have stayed around them and gone back into the place and reverted back to the person that I was. Or I could say like Abraham, it's time to move on because there are bigger things, there are greater things that God is calling me to. And I'll never experience them until I begin to walk by faith. And see, some of you have read the Bible, but you've never believed it. And some of you have heard the Word of God, but you've never taken it for, for, for yourself and made it uh, and taken ownership of what God has spoken into your life. And you've wondered, why, isn't, why aren't things changing? I can tell you, you're never going to see a change until you're obedient and you begin to step out in faith. Oh my, I'm... See, God has to move you where the blessing is. It may have taken you by surprise, but it didn't take God by surprise. See, God's been showing us. And He's he's showed me something through this past couple of years. And it started a couple of years ago as I, as I have discussed with you lately and, and, and some, some, to some degree. And I know I'm not going to be able to get through all of this, but praise God. But I was walking through a very dark time. But can I tell you this? You've got to, you've got to name your situation or your circumstances. And I walked through a very dark time in, 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 in 2018 and 2019, not understanding something that God was doing. But all I could do was, then, in many times, is stand, because that's what God calls us to do. That when you've done all to stand, then you stand. And I, and I, and I looked at that time and I began to think, my goodness, what the enemy was trying to do. What the enemy was trying to stop me from, 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 from possessing, where the enemy was trying to keep me from going. See, God had something for me. My, my thoughts were no, longer, were no longer dependable, but I had to begin to rely upon the mind of God. My emotions were everywhere. Everything inside of me was being shaken. The Bible says that everything will be shaken so that the things that cannot be shaken remain. And those are the purposes of God. And I could, you could look at that time and say, that was the worst time of my life. But I heard somebody t- speaking about this and, and I began to think, no, that wasn't the worst time of my life. That was the greatest experience that God brought me through to teach me some spiritual truths. And that was the time that God was delivering me from those things on my life. So you can look at it and say that was the worst time and I was almost, and, 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 it, and it practically destroyed me. Or you can say, you know, that's the time that God used in my life to take me to the place where I am today. It's not easy. Very difficult at times. And here's something that God showed me. And for some of you that are going through a very difficult circumstance right now, see, the, 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 the blessing isn't where you are. God's moving you. But God's been showing me something. And it's not something that I just heard, but it's something that I had to live out. Right before your breakthrough is the darkest hour. Because it's always darkest right before the break of dawn. Right before God is about to do something in your life. It is the darkest moment. 
You'll begin to walk through some dark places. You'll begin to question everything. You'll begin to ask God, what is it that you're trying to teach me? That's, that's what you need to be asking rather than God, why is this happening to God, I can't believe that this thing is happening in my life. What God was showing me that right before He's about to do something in your life, many people stop and they give up because He that endures to the end, the same shall be saved in Jesus' name. You see, but many people stop short and they don't experience the blessing of God because they stop short because it gets too hard and it gets too tough. But if you go back to the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3 and you read those uh, through those churches, every time, every church, he says, but he that endures to the end, there was a blessing for them. Can I tell you this? You don't get the blessing unless you endure to the end. Because it's not how you start, but how you finish that matters. I know I'm already over. We've got something else to do. See, it's the darkest hour. Abraham had come to a land that was so familiar. He knew it. And some of you are in the same place. He knew what was going to happen day to day. He knew what to expect. He knew, he knew how his life was going to go. And some of you, you know exactly what your day is going to be like. You have it planned down right, to the, right down to the minute, to the hour. You have it all planned out. To the point where you don't even need to consult God to, to, to go about your day. So much so that some of you don't even see the importance of getting down and praying and reading your Bible and getting direction from God. Why do I have to pray? Why do I have to be filled with the Spirit? I already have my calendar filled and I know how it's going to work out. That's the problem. Somebody else is directing your steps and not God. Uh, but pastor, I've already got these things in place. Well, well, as long as you want to put them in place, you'll never experience the supernatural power of God. You'll never experience the exponential blessing that God is going to place upon your life. You may get by. You may become su successful to some degree. But you will never experience the fullness of what God has for you until you're willing and ready to allow Him to direct your steps. Because the Bible says that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Is He still ordering your steps? Mm. I knew it. Look at your look at your neighbor. Said, "Tell him I knew it. I knew it." <laughs> Praise God. You want to come help me, Julio? So if you're doing it on your own, God no God's no longer ordering your steps. Hmm. Wait, Pastor. Wait, 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 Pastor. Yeah, if you're doing it on your own, God's no longer ordering your steps. And if God's no longer ordering your steps, then the blessings aren't going to be there. And guess what? You are under your own control. You, your life is under your control. Your life is under your protection. Your life is under you because you have made yourself Lord rather than making Him Lord over everything. And God doesn't work like that. God wants to bless you. God wants to bring you into a place where you can prosper in, your, in, in whatever it is that He's called you because all of us are, are different. But see, all of a sudden, God breaks in and calls Abraham out of, the, out of that and begins to declare to him His promise. He begins to declare to Abraham the destiny and His purpose for his life. And He says to him, if you're going to be a part of this, then you're going to have to step out of where you are and begin to follow Me into the unknown. And can I tell you this? It may be unknown to you, but it is perfectly known to God because it is His plan and it is His purpose and it is His desire and it is His will and it is His bill and He's going to take care of all of my needs according to His riches and glory when I begin to step out in faith and let go of my own life. Oh, a man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. I said, a man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. So, Pastor, you're saying for me to, to clean the calendar. No, I'm not saying that. A man plans his ways, 
but he knows they're always tentative to the will of God. Because a man who fails to plan, plans to fail. A man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. It may be unknown to you, but it's perfectly understood by God because he knows all things and the Bible says that he'll equip you in all things according to life and godliness in Christ Jesus in 2 Peter 1 and 3. He's getting you ready for something and I want you to understand this that in the, in the process of getting you ready God begins to speak his purpose and his plan. See for Abraham he, he, he says and, and, and I, I know I don't I can't get too far in this but let me start with this and let me just say give me, give me two more minutes and, and we'll, we'll be We'll move on. Let me start with the curse. And God begins to speak His purpose and plan to, 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 to Abram. And He says to him, He says, I'll curse the one that curses you. Now I want you to see that because, because He says the blessing is broad. But the curse is personal. And I want to speak this over your life today as you begin to take that step of faith and, and you say, you know what? I've planned my way, but, but it's time for me to step aside and see and, and, and lay my plans at the feet of Christ and see if He's okay with it. And when you put your calendar before God, you say, God, all of this is tentative based upon what you think and what you desire in my life today. I'll continue to plan. And I'll continue to work as if I'm going to do it all myself. But I'm going, to, I'm going to have faith and pray as if it's all up to God. Don't think you can get lazy on God because God doesn't like lazy people. He says be diligent. You see, the curse becomes very, very personal. And God says I'll curse the one that curses you that speaks evil of you, that, that tries to oppose you, the one that stands in your way. See, the Bible says that every weapon, that there would be weapons forged against me, but they would not prosper. You see, some of you have experienced the weapon that has been forged against you, but it's not going to prosper. You may be looking at something and see, see, here's the thing. If it's my will, I've got to deal with it. I said, if it's my will, I've got to deal with it. Come on, somebody. Believe with me this morning. If it's my will, then I'm going to have to deal with it in my own strength. But what does he say to Zerubbabel? He says, step back, sir. He says to this mountain, he says, Who art thou, O mountain, that stands before Zerubbabel? Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. He says, Who are you? Who do you think you are? He says, It's not by might, and it's not by strength, but it's by my Spirit, says the Lord, shouting grace, grace unto it. You see, when I begin to walk in the will of God and in the purpose of God, then it is no longer me that has to deal with whatever I'm facing. Because it is God that is going to begin to speak to the mountains that are in my way. And God will begin to say to those mountains, be removed. You see, God is going to curse that thing that is standing in front of you. That fruit tree that, that looked like it had some fruit on it. That person that was speaking a curse and not a blessing over your life. They may have said what you wanted to hear, but backstage and behind you, they were saying all kinds of things. What God is going to do is He's going to begin to expose them. And He says, then I'll eradicate them. Why? Because it's not you. The battle is the Lord's. It's not your battle. It's not your struggle this morning. If I'm walking in the will of God, then God begins to move the things that are standing in my way. And the Bible says that every tongue that rises against me, He will silence it. I say that and I quote the Word of God, but I can tell you this, I know it in experience. I've seen it time and time again. And how the devil would have tried to do something in my life and God cursed it. See, God makes the curse very personal. 
And it's directed at the one that is allowing themselves to be used by Satan. And he says, I'll curse that one, that individual, that couple, that circumstance, that thing that's standing in your way, that refuses to grow fruit, that refuses to allow you to walk in my will. When you begin to listen to me and to obey me and begin to take the steps, then I'll do that. I'll curse the King Saul that stands in your way. I'll curse the Jezebel, the Nebuchadnezzar that stands in your way. I'll curse the sickness. I'll curse the disease. I'll curse that binding spirit. I'll curse it, God says. That fig tree that acts like it's bearing fruit, He says, I'll curse it. That thing that is in your life and acts like it's on your side and pretends that it's with you. He said, but they're, but they're really vipers and wolves in sheep's clothing. He says, I'll curse it. Everything with an ulterior motive against you that would rather see your demise and your defeat, he says, I'll curse it. And he's very directed. So I don't know where you're at today. But I want to say this. As long as you're trying to do it in your own strength, as long as you're trying to do it in your own power, God will step back and He will let you. And I've said this at many times. But many people have said, I'll do it myself. Even if it kills me. And the problem is, is it's going to kill you. But if you step back, you say, okay, God, I'm going to step out in faith and step into your presence and into your will. And God says, then I'll curse those that curse you. And we'll, we'll finish it off next week, but I'll bless those who bless you. My goodness, in Jesus' name. I'll curse the one that curses you, but I'll bless the multitudes that bless you. I said, I'll curse the one that curses you. I'll curse that thing, but I'll bless those who pour into your life. I'll bless those who, who speak into your life. I'll bless those who are willing to sacrifice and to, to see the blessing come to pass. Can we pray this morning? Would you stand? I don't want you to leave because we're going to do something just real quick as, at the end. And so prepare yourselves, those of you that are, that are part, of this, uh, part of the baby dedication. We're going to have you come up in just a minute right after we pray. And we want to we want to recognize you and we want to pray over you uh, as a church and we want to we we're just we're just so blessed father today as we stand in this place god we answer the call and father we know father what you are doing today and we know father that that you are in control and god many of us have tried to do things on our own and tried to tr tried to take care of these things and, and have the control over our lives, oh God. And I know, Father, that this is a hard thing many times to break. It's been instilled in us. It's been, it's been ingrained in our DNA. But God, now you speak better things. You begin to, you begin to speak better things to us. Uh, God, you're bringing us to a place, God, where, where every, everything that happens is dependent upon you. Every blessing, every miracle, everything that you're going to do, Satan has tried to stop us up to this point. But today, Father, I pray that God, that we would hear your word and begin to step out in faith. And that God, that we would begin to cry out to you, the only true God, and begin to call out to you because you, you know, Father, what you have planned and purposed for our lives. And so today, Father, I pray that in Jesus' name, there's one thing contingent upon this and the Bible says that we must be His children. And so I want to pray with you if you're in this place today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You see, you, we say it this way. It's kind of like your favorite football star or whoever it may be. You may know all about them. You may know their stats, where they're from, what school they went to and everything else. But, but if you were to knock on their door today, they would look at you and wouldn't know who you are. And see, a lot of people will equate knowing about Jesus to knowing Jesus, but it's the same thing. And Jesus wants to have a personal relationship with you. And so if you're here today and, and, and that's your heart this morning, I want to pray with you. Because the Bible says we believe in our heart, confess with our mouth. You say, it's, well, well, God show me a sign. No, this is, this is it. It's by faith you accept and receive. So would you pray with me, church, this morning? And as we pray, I want you to pray if that's you. Father... 
forgive me because I am a sinner. But today, I know, Jesus, what you did in my life. How you took my sin upon yourself and you took it to the cross and you were crucified, pierced, whipped, your flesh broken open, your blood poured out for my sin. Today, I need to experience your forgiveness and your love. Today, I'm asking you, be my Savior, my Lord, my God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God. Praise God.